I am fairly certain Jeff's motor just died. Hey, good morning. So it's a beautiful day. We are actually going flying today, but not the conventional type of paramotor flying. We're here at iFly Westchester. It's an indoor skydiving tunnel. My friends here are hooking me up with some time to go fly, which I've never done before in a tunnel. I've got like 38 skydives and 15 base jumps, but I'm absolutely no expert, so I might freaking bounce around the inside of this tunnel like it ain't no thing, but we'll see. I'm excited, I'm a little nervous. We're gonna go in and see what's up and uh, fly around in a wind tunnel. Hey, it's Ernie. We teleported to the park. Ernie's here, Jeff is here, and we're gonna go flying. And I fly was freaking awesome, um, but I wanted to share my thoughts like while we were flying. So we're gonna go up and fly around. It's like mad calm, even though the sky looks horrible. We're gonna go up and freaking fly around and have fun. And I'll uh, tell you guys my thoughts on iFly. <laughs> Another day, another adventure. <laughs> if you didn't see my uh, second to last video of Jeff taking a collapse on that very wing, you should check it out. It was a little bit gnarly. It was a good time though. So we're gonna go basically around this hill, around the next hill, and then it opens up into like a big farmland territory. I'm actually surprised I'm getting bumped around right here. But for why? It's supposed to be calm. Oh well, we'll make do. As long as this doesn't materialize into a thunderstorm and collapse Jeff's wing again. So I fly. I fly indoor skydiving wind tunnel of epicness. It was pretty sick. When you learn to skydive, it's all about learning body position. It's a very unnatural thing to fly your body you make very small movements and very big things happen. But the cool thing is when you're free falling in the sky, 
you have infinite sky to you know like move around you don't notice if you're doing something like drifting anything minute you just don't notice but in the wind tunnel you have 14 like a 14 foot diameter circle so if you move your arm a little too far you're hitting the glass wall so it becomes very apparent how sensitive you have to be in the tunnel and it took me like the first little session we did it was probably like two minutes or something i was like dang this is this is not like easy at all we sat there and watched a little while afterwards they bring these fresh brand new people that just come to try it out and some of them are like in a wrestling match and they're bouncing off the walls uh, but other people they just if you relax and kind of don't stress you do really well you know if you happen to be in the new york city area go to those guys freaking i fly westchester tell them i sent you oh night it's a blo it falcon jacqueline texted me check your left paramotor pocket for a random surprise i hope it's a snack i'm hungry <laughs> yes it's a freaking snack mate i was about to say flying while hungry reminds me of the icarus race when i was just flying around all day and i'd get like a bite to eat for lunch and then by the time sunset came i was like starving oh. I got powder in my face. Check it out. This is the park from accidentally evading the police video. Hey, uh, Matty boy, could you uh, get me a gallon of diesel fuel? The tractor broke down. It's colder than a day old Aunt Jemima pancake up here. I'll tell you what. Up and over. <laughs> That's one thing we were doing in the tunnel. Damn, look at that house. Freaking destroyed. By the damn tractor mobile thing. Big old building. The one and only Delaware River. Looking not too shabby. It's cool to see stuff like this. Like those freaking dump truck, whatever loader things they are, you know those tires are huge. Like six foot diameter tires and they just look like toys from up here. getting close to sunset and I want to make sure we make it back in time so I think we'll do that whole get a bunch of altitude thing and go in that direction Gentifully. certain Jeff's motor just died. I just saw him descend all of a sudden. Is it going again? It doesn't look like it. Well, this is interesting. He, uh, he signaled to me. Let's see, if I was Jeff, where would I land? Golf course, farm fields, Farm fields are the biggest. Son of a... You got this, buddy. All right, he's coming in to land in this brown field, I guess. I saw him start to descend, and he started to fidget around a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> oh, shit. And then he did the whole, like, 
fingers across the neck thing of like my motor died, I don't see any better spots unless we tried to glide all the way over to that school over there. I think he's picking the safe option to go in this field right below us. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably land with him just to see what's up and I can probably get back up and jet out unless we can fix the problem. <laughs> see, <laughs> Jeff has provided two great, great learning experiences so far. Last time he took a collapse and I caught it on film. This time, Jeff has a freaking motor out. It's 8.07, sunsets in about 20 minutes. Um, it might just be better off. I don't know. I'll probably wait and text him. Yeah, I think he's coming into the field on the left over here. He'll probably put it close to the road. I might just come down with him. I don't know. I doubt there's anything I can do to help him other than get him a ride at this point. All right, he's out of his seat. You know, this stuff is plowed. If it's plowed, I'm probably not gonna come in with him just to minimize the, uh, the impact on the local farmer. This is why you uh, practice spot landings. <laughs> Poor Jeff. Yeah, this is planted. This is little baby corns or something. You got it. You got it. You got it. Nicely done, Jeff. What in the hell, man? Jeff's down. No. <laughs> There's a car already stopping to help. <laughs> she's not helping, she's taking pictures. <laughs> Classic. My engine shut off. <laughs> Try not to damage the corn. I'm gonna fly past him and yell. I'll grab the truck! I feel bad just dipping out, but I want to communicate with him somehow that I'll be right back. Well, it looks like I had my first engine out. Tucker and I were just flying probably at about 1,500 feet over that ridge. For whatever reason, the engine decided to stop. So this was the nearest field to land in. Did my best not to damage any of the corn. Landing was pretty smooth. And here we are. Tucker went back to get the van. Scout machine 2.0 is right there. It did actually start back up, so I'm not sure what caused the problem. We will check it out a little closer. I didn't want to risk trying to take off again with the corn and traffic and everything else. So we're going to load it into Van Mobile and head back to the park. Are you okay, sir? I am, thank you. Okay, you no, I have a guy coming to pick me oh, up. Okay, thank yeah, you, though. My husband said that before I was here, like, are you okay? Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I just had an engine out for whatever reason, but you'll buy the plan for that. Oh, yeah, I landed right here. Thank you, though. Oh, man, poor Jeff. I feel bad because it's like the whole thing of, like, leave no man behind. But honestly, I can't really do anything for him. He's down safe. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to fix the problem and take off in that field again. That was, like, planted corn. Nailed it, buddy. I'll be there soon. Jeff said it just started, but he thinks he will wait here. Well, that's weird. Very weird for an engine to die, like, under cruise power, not restart, and then restart once you're on the ground. Maybe the spark plug went bad? He said he doesn't think he should try launching in the corn. I agree. I was going to land with him just for the sake of entertainment value, just to like be on the ground. But there's corn there and it's a farmer's field and we should only use it for emergency purp purposes. 
bring her in hot and dirty. <laughs> Nailed it! And we lost Jeff. He landed way out there. All right, on the way to rescue Jeff, he's uh, breaking his motor down so it fits in the van. We got his wing bag, we got everything. There he is! You made it. I did, man. What the heck happened? I don't know, it just, I was at like half throttle and it just went. It almost sounded like, oh no. I like saw you surge and I thought you hit turbulence, but I'm like, it's not bumpy. No. And then I, I tried, I don't just see me trying to start it. Yeah. I tried to start, it started right when I got over here and it started up, two pulls, it started. That's so weird. It was, definitely. I mean, I, I pulled it, I think three times in the air. I'm like, okay, you know, normally if it shuts off, all right, it's probably something not gonna recover from. But, so I glided it in and so okay, well, let me try it. But then I got a thing, I was like, I don't really wanna like launch in this guy's corn. Yeah, man. We're all, all good. Right, no problem. Thank you. There we go. First off, huge thank you to the guys at iFly. Shout out to Katie McNally for hooking it up. It was a good time. I'd like to go back, learn more. I definitely learned a whole lot. But yeah. Moral of the story with Jeff, we um, don't know what happened to his motor. It restarted once he got back on the ground. If by the time I edit and post this, he's found what happened, I'll definitely include that in the description or something. But the moral of the story is fly high enough that you have several outs within reach and time to think about it, which I'm very guilty of not doing all the time. Fly at your own risk. Have fun. Oh, uh, mosquito. I will see you guys in the next one. Drop a, a thumbs up and subscribe and stuff. Bzz, bzz.